Hello everyone, welcome back. In from this video, we are going to start a new video series on electromagnetics. If you are first time to my channel, please consider subscribing. So the first topic in this electromagnetics is coordinate systems. So why these coordinate systems are required is to represent to represent the vectors graphically. So to represent the vectors graphically, we require these coordinate systems. So generally the coordinate systems are classified into two types. So these coordinate systems are classified into two types. One is orthogonal coordinate system and the second is non-orthogonal coordinate system. So in orthogonal coordinate system, in orthogonal coordinate system, the axes are mutually perpendicular to each other. So the, all the axes are mutually perpendicular to each other. In non-orthogonal coordinate system, the axes are not mutually perpendicular to each other. So generally, we will prefer orthogonal coordinate system. And again, orthogonal coordinate system is classified into two types. One is right-handed orthogonal coordinate system and the second is left-handed orthogonal coordinate system. So in right-handed orthogonal coordinate system, the axes are perpendicular to each other and the direction of movement of axis is towards the right-hand side. So that is this side. So if you go the axis in this direction, then it is called as right-handed orthogonal system. And similarly, in left-handed orthogonal system, the axis or like this. So we move from towards the left-hand side in the case of left-handed orthogonal system. And generally, we'll prefer right-handed orthogonal system. So broadly, the coordinate systems are classified into three types. So these coordinate systems are classified into three types or three types of coordinate systems are there which we have to study. So the first type is rectangular or, or Cartesian coordinate system. Rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system so represented by the axis x, y and z. These axes are represented by these three axes are represented by x, y and z. Second is cylindrical or circular coordinate system. represented by rho, phi and z. Similarly, the chord, third coordinate system is spherical or polar coordinate system. Spherical or polar coordinate system whose axes are represented by r theta phi. Okay, so these are the three coordinate systems which is present in vector calculus and we have to study each and every types of coordinate system, their conversions and their conversions from one coordinate system to other coordinate system. Okay. So next the first coordinate system is rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system. rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system. So in this co rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system, the axes are represented by X, Y and Z. And since we follow right handed system, so we will take like this X, Y and Z. So any point P on this rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system 
is represented by x comma y comma z any point on this rectangular coordinate system is represented by x y and z so x is distance of distance of the point p from x axis similarly y is distance of the point p from y axis okay so sorry from origin to x axis and similarly from origin to y axis similarly z is distance of point p from origin to z axis that is it is present at a distance of x and at a distance of y and at a distance of z from x y and z axis respectively then the point p can be represented like this so this is the point p which is the combination of the three points x y and z so this is the point p on rectangular coordinate system so next is any point any vector suppose the vector is a bar any vector on rectangular coordinate system is represented by ax ax cap plus ay ay cap plus az az cap where ax cap ay cap and az cap are the unit vectors so unit vectors along x axis y axis and z axis respectively so ax and ay and az are the unit vectors along x y and z axis respectively and this ax capital ax is the magnitude of the vector a bar along x axis and ay is the magnitude of so it is the magnitude of uh, the vector a bar along y axis and az is the magnitude of the vector a bar along z axis so along z axis the magnitude is az okay so any vector in rectangular coordinate system is represented like this and similarly the limits for x y and z the point x y and z is minus infinity less than x less than infinity minus infinity less than y less than infinity and minus infinity less than z less than infinity so that is it should be a finite value it should not be a finite value that is x y and z should have a finite values in order to represent as a point on the rectangular coordinate system okay so this is about the rectangular coordinate system its axis representation point and also the vector representation in rectangular coordinate system okay so the next coordinate system is cylindrical coordinate system so the next coordinate system is cylindrical coordinate system or it is also called as circular coordinate system okay so it is also called as circular coordinate system so in this the coordinate system is represented by a cylinder so this is so the cylindrical coordinate system the point p is represented by rho phi and z here rho stands for radius of the cylinder radius of the cylinder phi stands for azimuthal angle azimuthal angle so it is the angle 
it is the angle from x axis on to x y plane so it is the angle which is drawn from the x axis this from the x axis on to x y plane so this plane this entire plane is called as x y plane this entire plane is called x y plane so this is z and this entire plane is called yz plane and this entire plane is called as xz plane and z is height of the cylinder so it is the height of the cylinder so if you represent this so this is the radius of the cylinder so this is the radius so it is represented by rho so from x axis if you draw a an angle onto x y plane so this represents the azimuthal angle phi and similarly the height of the cylinder is represented by z so rho is the radius of the cylinder and phi is the azimuthal angle which is drawn from this x axis onto x y plane and z is the height of the cylinder so these are the coordinates in cylindrical coordinate system so any vector in cylindrical coordinate system is represented by a rho a rho cap plus a phi a phi cap plus a z a z cap where a rho is the unit vector along rho and a phi is the unit vector along phi and a z is the unit vector along the height of the cylinder okay and these are the magnitudes of rho phi and z respectively similarly the limits of the coordinates or points in the cylindrical coordinate system is 0 less than rho less than infinity 0 less than or equal to phi less than or equal to 2 pi similarly z minus infinity less than z less than infinity so these are the maximum and minimum limits of the points that should be there in the cylindrical coordinate system okay so the next coordinate system is spherical or polar coordinate system okay so the next coordinate system is spherical or polar coordinate system so spherical or polar coordinate system is represented like this okay so this is x y and z so any point on spherical coordinate system is represented by r theta phi so r theta and phi where r here stands for radius of the cylinder so it stands for radius of the cylinder and theta is polar angle or half angle or it is also called zenith angle or it is also called elevation angle okay so it is the angle which is drawn from z axis which is drawn from z axis onto yz plane so it is drawn from z axis onto yz plane similarly phi as we have seen from the previous coordinate system phi is called as azimuthal angle so it is drawn from x axis onto x y plane so it is drawn from x axis onto x y plane so this is the radius r or this is the radius r of the cylinder similarly 
if you draw an angle from x axis on to xy plane it is the azimuthal angle which is represented by phi similarly if you draw an, an angle from z axis on to yz plane then this angle is theta which is called as polar angle or half angle or zenith angle or elevation angle okay so this is the representation of spherical coordinate system so any vector on spherical coordinate system is represented by ar ar cap plus a theta a theta cap plus a phi a phi cap okay so this is the vector representation in spherical coordinate system and similarly the limits of r theta and phi in spherical coordinate system is given by 0 less than r less than minus infinity 0 less than theta less than or equal to pi and 0 less than or equal to phi less than or equal to 2 pi so these are the limits of r theta and phi in the case of spherical coordinate system okay